I'm running a Python notebook over here, but this Python notebook is a little bit special. I can run the Python code as normal, but I can also run this as a web app. This gives me a couple of widgets, and you can see that when I interact, the outputs of my machine learning system also update. But it gets even more special because I can reuse all of that code to also build me a fast API app. So that means I can take UVCorn and point it to this one notebook file to this create app function over here that contains the fast API app. From there, I can also have a look at the docs and I'm also able to interact with the API and confirm that it works. Not only does the notebook also contain the API, it also contains all the unit tests that we wanna have for it. You can see that I've got the output of PyTest down below over here. Alternatively, what I can also do is I can point PyTest to this one notebook file. And that's super useful because it means you can also run this notebook as part of your CI pipeline, so that's also great. And as a final cherry on top, you know, this notebook is saved as a Python file, so I can also run it as a normal Python script. And that means I can also really just use this as a command line utility as well. Super neat, and there's your output. So just to reiterate, this one notebook can be used as a normal notebook, as a web app, as an API endpoint, as a command line utility, and it can also add all the unit tests that you might want. So the goal of this video is to explain how you might be able to set this up yourself, but I also wanna explain how this works under the hood. And probably the easiest place to get started with that is to explain the remote file structure under the hood, because that's where a lot of these features really come from. So as a starting point, let's have a look at a few of these cells over here. You can see that I've got this one cell here that has this wiggly stuff import, that it has this one sortable list widget. By the way, that's the widget over here. That's the thing that allows me to add items, maybe sort them. The design idea here, by the way, is that I'm looking for entities in text, and this is a very convenient way for me to just add names of entities, right? And there's a separate widget here for the text input, but as mentioned before, this cell on top over here that has this sortable list, that's one of the widgets that I'm building into this entity variable over here. I've also got this text input. And then in the cell below, I just have those user interface elements uh, kind of just stacked on top of each other over here with some markdown. And then I've also got the output of the machine learning model. That's this out variable over here. Uh, that's all listed below. But the code itself is not necessarily too important. The main thing that I want to observe is just that we have those two cells and you could wonder how that's represented in the underlying file. And that would look a little bit like this. A Marima notebook is just a Python file in the end, and cells are just functions with a decorator on top. These functions are a little bit special in the way that they are designed though. And one thing that's really important to just keep in the back of your mind is that you would never edit this file manually. You would have Marimo do that for you, but there are some clever design aspects to this. For example, if I have a look at that one cell that is using all those user interface elements, now you can see again, we've got the text input here and we've got the entities. And again, those were widgets that I defined in this other cell on top. But you're gonna notice that this function does have text input and entities as like actual inputs. So one thing that's happening here under the hood, if each cell were kind of like a node in a graph, then depending on the variables that are defined in all these different cells, you can see that Marimo's kind of building a DAG if it were. And you can also see that what this top cell over here is returning is a variable called entities. And oh, this cell over here uh, definitely needs that. Therefore, these two cells are linked. And you can kind of start thinking about a notebook as this big chain of cells that are also representing a DAG of sorts, which represents the execution order, so to say. But uh, those are, in a lot of ways, different details. The main thing that's just really important for us to understand right now is that cells in Marimo are in the end just functions, but they are decorated with this app.cell call. This also includes markdown cells, by the way. It's just that internally we're using mo.md to render the markdown. We do a similar trick with SQL, by the way. So yeah, uh, so far so good. Uh, Marimo itself has support for these widgets, so that's how you can get all of that to work. That's all fine and well. But then how do you get fast API to work like this? Because if you're using something like UVCorn, well, UVCorn wants you to point to a Python file and then to a Python function that it can go ahead and run. And when you have a look at these cells over here, you're gonna notice that they don't exactly have a name. So you might wonder how can you point UVCorn to a existing function in Marimo? Now to answer that question, let's just have a look at this cell over here, the one that has that create app function that contains the fast API app. Well, that is a little bit special because as you can see over here, this is a reusable cell. That's different from below, right? Like there's no reusable element listed over here. But Marimo does have this notion of a reusable cell, and that's a non-standard cell that actually makes a cell a little bit special. The rule works as follows. Whenever you have a cell that just has a single function in it and nothing else, or a single class that'll also go ahead and work, then there is an opportunity for that cell to be stored like this. And to contrast that, again, you'll notice that this is how we normally store a cell with this app cell decorator and this underscore function. But Marimo can actually store the function with its own proper name, and it gets a different decorator. Now, 
In order for this to be the underlying representation, there's one extra rule, and that is that you're gonna wanna use a setup cell because this function might have dependencies and those need to be available globally. The way that you're able to fix that is to add something that's known as a setup cell to your notebook. This is a special kind of cell. You can detect it by looking at the lower right-hand corner of the output. It says setup cell directly. The way you can add it, by the way, is you're able to open up the command toggle and if you type setup cell, there's a add setup cell command. But the thing that makes this cell special is it's a single cell that's globally available and you're able to put all of your global requirements in there. And again, if we have a look at the Python file itself, you're gonna see that this setup cell over here also doesn't come with this app.cell decorator. No, it is a context manager instead. And again, you don't do this manually. Marimo handles all of this for you. But the benefit is that from the perspective of the rest of the file, these are all globally available. And this is how, if you put all of the dependencies of your reusable function inside of one of these setup cells, that from the perspective of the Python notebook, this function can just be imported and used elsewhere because all the dependencies that we have inside of it well, those are available. They're not hidden away inside of a function scope. Because this function is now globally available in our notebook environment, uvcorn can actually point to it. So we can do something like uvcorn, name of this file, and then point to this create underscore app right here. And that's everything that you need. The next big feature that I showed was all related to PyTest, and that integration doesn't really require special features as far as the Python file is concerned. Just to emphasize, we've got those two cells that I started with, right? So import PyTest, and I've got this test client from FastAPI that I'm using here, and that's all being used all over the place in uh, the files that I declared. But the PyTest integration relies more on a convention than anything specific to the Python language. So it's just a convention that if you have a single cell that has all these functions with test underscore, that then Marimo is clever enough on how to actually route that to PyTest if it's being run from the command line. And again, if we inspect the file that's uh, underneath all of this, uh, this is the cell that just creates the PyTest import and that client. And then this cell again is really just a normal Marimo cell. It is again, more of a convention, I suppose, than something that's really hard coded, something that really affects the code itself here. But the main thing that is important is that all of this is pretty much self-contained. You don't need a separate file. You really can keep everything in one single file, which also means it's easy to share with a colleague. And one other quick feature that I do think is worth mentioning, um, we also have some really great UV features. Again, because this is a Python script, we can add a little bit of this commented metadata on top. And this is something that UV can use to understand, hey, what version of Python should I be using? And also what dependency should I be using? Preferably with a version number attached. And in this case, you can see PyTest definitely is a dependency. But the main reason why I wanted to just quickly show this is because this also helps emphasize that it's not just a notebook that is reusable, it is also a notebook that is easily reproducible. You don't need a separate file for your requirements or anything like that. Uh, that is also nicely self-contained in here. Now, at this point, it's hopefully also clear that because this is just a normal Python file, you can just call UV run or Python and then give this file and it will run as a normal Python script. But Marimo has a couple of interesting features to also understand what's happening when you're running this on the command line. Now to explain the command line stuff, I'm gonna glance over a bunch of details. Uh, if you're interested in the file, by the way, uh, link is in the show notes, but the two main things that I'm using here are this mocle args call over here. This comes from the Marimo library. And there's also this app meta utility that I'm using here. So just to go through the steps, this mocle args over here, that's gonna grab any extra command line arguments that are being passed. So if you're going to call Python notebook.py, let's say, one thing you can do is you can pass extra arguments, something like dash dash key, and then you can also pass along a value. And what Marimo is gonna be able to do with this function over here is get all of that in a dictionary-like object, and then you can inspect the features that were passed along. Not only is Marimo able to parse these command line arguments, it is also able to detect that it's running from the command line as a script. And that allows you to apply some extra logic if this is running as a script. But if I detect that there are no command line arguments being passed, then I need to give it some help text and exit. If we do get command line arguments though, oh, then we're gonna go ahead and use those. And if those command line arguments are missing some information that we need, oh, then we're gonna fall back to the user interface widgets that we defined in the same notebook. A really nice pattern that I'm using here, by the way, is I'm converging everything towards a single Pydantic object, which allows me to validate everything in one single place. This model input is also something that I can reuse instead of fast API, so that's also a great feature. That merging pattern is something I tend to use all over the place. But the main thing that I hope, at least at this point, is that it's also clear how you can run Remo from the command line as well. It's really just using these extra utilities that we've got 
And if you really wanted to, by the way, you could also choose to use some utilities like click or typer to define a command line utility in the notebook as well. You don't have to use these utilities. You can also use external libraries. The benefit of this approach though, is that you have less dependencies. So just to reiterate, Marimo notebooks are stored as normal Python files, and that gives you a lot of great benefits. Things like UV support, but also the fact that because it's just a normal Python file, you can do normal Python stuff in a notebook. And that includes doing things like adding a command line utility or also shipping with a proper API. I've actually done this for a bunch of my personal projects, and the fact that it's all just in one file really makes it not only pragmatic, but also quite enjoyable to work with. If this sounds interesting, definitely give a like and a subscribe to this channel because we have lots of tutorials that go into more depth. And in particular, if you're new here, one thing you might like to know is that we also support VS Code these days. If that sounds interesting, check out this video in the upper corner. Thanks for listening.